Okay, again, welcome to this 10 o'clock session. Um, on this Wednesday with us is um, Markus Zapke Gründemann, active member of the Django community in Germany, and he will tell us something about multi-language documentation in Swinx. Yeah. Yeah, morning, everyone. Um, I hope everyone can hear me. Yeah, okay, great. Um, yeah, so nice you all came to hear the talk. Hope we can you tell you something new. Um, yeah, yeah, as Fabian already introduced, I'm a member of the German Django community. Uh, and um, yeah, I'm doing software development since now nearly 15 years. Uh, started with Perl. Then doing some PHP now, mostly I'm doing Python, Django stuff, and also involved with the open data community in uh, Germany. And uh, I also do a lot of training with people, basically Django training. And um, I have a company called Transcode, and I'm a board member of the German Django uh, Association. So um, if you have anything about Django in German, you can also talk to me. <laughs> And you can find me on the internet on uh, keimlink.de or at keimlink on Twitter. Yeah, so some basics. Um, first, short introduction of Swings. So who um, is already using Swings here in the room? Okay, so nearly half of the people. Oh, okay, so introduction is good. Yeah, so, so Swing is a Python documentation generator, which means it is written in Python. It's not only for Python. You can use Swing for any project uh, you want to. So, uh, yeah, any language you want to. You can even document stuff which has nothing to do with programming at all if you want to. And um, the markup language is called restructured text, which is something which was, if I remember correctly, was invented by the Python community. It is something comparable to Markdown, which many people uh, know uh, already. And, um, the interesting thing is that you have a lot of output formats. So you write your restructured text documents, and you can create a lot of output formats, as you can see here, like HTML, um, LaTeX, and of course, PDF, EPUB, text info manual pages, plain text. So you also have um, the opportunity to display um, your documentation properly on different devices. And yeah, Swings can be found on swings-doc.org, also the Swings documentation. Um, yeah, and of course, as the title of the talk says, I'm talking about internationalization. So um, it's often referred to as I18N. So because it has 18 letters, and first it is I, last it is N. So this is often the abbreviation for internationalization, especially if you look at module names in programming. And um, the idea about I18N is that you um, can translate the strings inside your software without having to change your software all the time. Um, because, I mean, if you, if you would have your software and inside all the different uh, texts in the different languages and you always have to switch there in between while writing your regular code, this would really be a mess. And of course, you, so you need a like transparent system to exchange uh, the messages or the language of the messages the people see that use your software. And uh, the most, or the best, maybe best known tool for that is GNU uh, GetText, which is open source software. And this is also used in Swings to uh, create the yeah, translations. So an, an simple GetText example looks like this. Oh, there was a bit missing on the left side, but yeah, I hope that's not that critical. Yeah, so. Um, it's simply that you create a, a translation a catalog object. Um, it, it, in this example, the uh, catalog is called example, and it's in a directory called locale. And um, a fallback through is simply uh, um, for changing the way of exception you get if it's not existing. So it's not a, important at the moment. And so. What, what is missing here on the left side of the screen is that there is an underscore there. So underscore equals to get text. This is usually done uh, everywhere. So underscore is used as a alias for the get text function so that you have to write less uh, code 
for the internationalization. And then you can see this print statement, always look on the bright side of life, and, uh, and you can see that the string that is inside the print statement, or print function call, uh, is again inside this function call, which uses this underscore, which is an alias of tgetText. And this way you um, collect this string for translation, so your source language would be English in this case, and you would have English as the source of your translations, and then you can create inside this locale directory different example catalogs for each language where you translate this English string to something else. So this is how GetHex basically works. You collect the source strings, and then in the end you translate them to your like target language. Um, yeah. of, of course, this is what happen, is happening behind the scenes, what the swing is doing for you, so you don't have to do anything like that if you want to translate your documentation, just for short explanation of technical background. Um, yeah, but, but why use GetText for translated documentation? Why not simply copying all my files to a new directory, like from EN to, I don't know, DE or GP, and simply translating all the text documents again, build the documentation again, and then I have the do do documentation in a different language. Yeah, so first problem is um, if the documentation is updated in the regular language, so the English documentation is updated, um, you have a hard time on finding which stuff has been changed because you can't easily diff between them because all your content is different because your content is a different language. Especially if you, if you have a language like Japanese, which has totally different characters like Latin languages. Second problem then is, if you leave something out, because maybe you don't have the manpower at the moment to translate it at the time, or you don't know what is the proper translation for, for this thing, uh, then it's simply gone. Or you have to copy and paste this paragraph to your documentation in English and remember that you have, still have to translate it. And if you use get text, GetX will replace all strings that haven't been translated automatically with the original string. So if you don't translate a single string or paragraph and you build your translated documentation, you will still see the original string. Um, another thing or advantage is that your markup is not duplicated because if you think of a document with any markup like with structured text or markdown or whatever, HTML, and you copy this whole document and you translate it, you copy all the markup with it. And if the markup is also changed because the documentation evolves and you know, the way it is displayed is also changed with the next release of the documentation, you have to do this well in your translation. But you only want to do translation and markup, so you again have another problem. And another problem of yeah, not using tools like GetText is that you exclude people um, because for this, usually you have to use tools like Git or Mercurial, which have to, yeah, and they have to understand how all of this works. Maybe do a pull request then somewhere to get your uh, translation merged in and so forth. And uh, yeah, sometimes people do translations um, are not familiar with this enough to uh, get um, um, involved in this process. And so if you can use professional translation tools, um, uh, the much more easier for the translators to translate something for your project. And these professional translation tools also offer you opportunities you normally don't have with regular text editors, like these tools can, for example, show you, oh, um, it seems like that uh, this paragraph has been translated before, and here I have a text which is 90% the same, the translation, 90% the same, like, uh, or similar to the text that has there been before, so you can simply then get these 90% similar translation from your translation cache, put it in and simply change a few words. So also your translation of already existing and evolving uh, documentation is faster. Okay, yeah, so how does it all work with Swings now, what I explained? Um, this is an illustration from the Swings documentation. And uh, yeah, and this shows how or internationalized documentation is built in Swings. So you see on the far left the RST files, um, which are um, then built into POT files, which are um, uh, 
templates. So PO is the extension for the source files uh, of get text, and POT is a, a template for that, so it's the source language. And then you translate these POT files, here a tool like Poodle is mentioned, but there are also other tools, to a PO file. And the PO file is then, uh, again, um, transferred into, or, yeah, compiled into a MO file. And the MO file is M a, a binary version of your PO file, which is faster on access, so you can, can get all these translation strings faster. And in the end, then, uh, the RST files are taken again, together with the MO files, and then the, all the original strings are replaced by the translated strings, and you have your uh, translated documentation. If you want to do this, um, you have to do um, a few things. Uh, first thing is, um, if you haven't done this in your... So Usually you have a docs directory, inside the docs directory you have a confpy file in Swings where you configure how Swings works. And uh, first thing you have to do, you have to say which is my source language, like the main language of my documentation, in this case it's English. And uh, you have to say, okay, where do all my um, translations go, like with the other catalogs with the different other languages, and in this case it's the directory locale. And then there's also a a uh, fairly new configuration uh, value, get text compact. And if you set this to true, and your documentation has several subfolders, all documents in a subfolder are collected into a single catalog. If you set this to false, you get a catalog for each file. So, because if you have a documentation which consists of 50 different files in five different folders, you may only want to have five catalogs instead of 50 because it makes translation easier. So you have different opportunities here. So to do uh, the um, translation in an easier way, there is an, an um, extension or plugin for uh, Swings called Swings INTL. Um, and uh, yeah, you can install this via pip. Um, so uh, that it is available in addition to Swings itself. And um, this will then help you to deal with all the translation files because it is possible to use Swing itself and some get text tools to create the uh, PO files and MO files and all the stuff. But this is a very uh, nasty way and uh, also complicated way of doing this. And Swing's INTL uh, makes this all easier. So. Um, yeah, if Swings INTL is installed, first thing you do is make get text, which uh, uh, yeah, calls the built in Swings command to create all these um, uh, POT files. So it extracts all the uh, strings from the RST files and puts them into these, these catalogs. And then um, you say uh, Swings INTL update minus L, which is the language, so the new language I want, like German. and where should, uh, or where are my um, uh, locate, um, where are my PO, POT files, like this build locale directory. So they are, make get text stores them in this directory. And so this Sphinx INTL update command will fetch all these POT files, make get text created, and create new German um, catalogs for that. Of course, they will be empty because uh, this command is only like copying them and preparing them so you can insert the German translation strings. So the next thing you have to do is translate the documentation. Uh, I will talk in a moment about the details for that. And then you, uh, after you translated everything, you can say Sphinx INTL build, and then it will create all these MO files that had been shown in the image before. And then in the end, you can again say, say uh, make HTML, which creates, for example, the HTML uh, documentation. You can also say make PDF LaTeX or something else, make EPUB. And with the Sphinx Ops um, 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 yeah, options, you can say that the language should be something different. So you override the language in the confpy file to create a German HTML instead of an English one, because English is your default language and now you want something different. So this is the four commands you need to 
uh, yeah, create the catalogs and then translate them and build a different um, documentation language. Yeah. So what you can use for translation, one tool, of course, there are also others, but what is very um, helpful, at least to me, is Transifex. So Tran Transifex is a web service, so um, it's not a software you download, it's more like a, a website you use. And um, it's free for open source projects, um, but if you use commercial projects, you have to pay them, of course, because, yeah, they also need to have some income. Um, and uh, Transifex really works like a professional translation tool, like which features I said, like show me similar strings I had before and also other things. And it's also a very nice tool because you can collaborate with many other people on the same translation and people can work together to translate all the stuff online. Pip has, uh, Transifex has a, also a command line tool, Transifex client, you pip install it, you set TX in it and to your username and password, so you said you can, that the uh, Transifex client can talk to the platform. And then you can use Swings INTL together with Transifex because Swings INTL has Transifex support. And as you can see, uh, you first uh, run this update TX, so TX is the uh, abbreviation for Transifex update TX config resources. Um, which um, yeah, prepares um, Transifex so that it can be used together with your Swings documentation. Normally, you have to do a lot of steps here manually, and Swings INTL is doing everything for you here. And then you can say TX push minus S, and this is a little bit similar to like Git or Mercurial. So you push your stuff to Transifex, and minus S means sources, so I push my English catalogs to Transifex so that other people then can create translations and translate it to German, Spanish, Japanese, whatever. If translations has been, have been translated on Transifex, I can pull them again with TX pull, and I can explicitly say which languages I want. For example, here again, I want to pull the German translation some people created on Transifex. And then and again say, okay, like before Swings INTL built, Swings make HTML for German, and now I have my uh, like German full translation and can see everything in German. Yeah, so this was like the, yeah, the workflow you usually use, and um, during the years I'm already working with Swings INTN, I uh, discovered a few things that are helpful in the everyday work with international IDA's documentation. Um, so, if you um, use code inside your documentation, here's a snippet of template code, for example, um, you should be uh, um, yeah, you should be careful and uh, always use English inside these code examples, because otherwise, if, if I would, for example, use German here and something would be translated to Japanese, the Japanese people would have a hard time understanding what the content of the template really is about. Um, there have been requests on the Swings mailing list to also translate code, but this hasn't been decided on how to deal with that, and if this is possible. Because at the moment, only like the, the, the written text is extracted from the Swings document and not the code, of course. Another thing is there are different ways to handle URLs in RST. You can use the uh, syntax above, which uh, puts URL directly into the text, and you can use the syntax below, where an alias is used. And if you use the alias version, um, URL gets lost because it is no longer part of the catalog, and especially if this sentence is translated, the name Python sources would be translated to Python query code or something similar in another language, and so the name of the reference is lost and the URL can't be inserted. So always put the URL inside your um, documentation so that translator sees the URL and can translate this properly. Um, yeah. Another thing is you often want to refer to uh, external URLs, and um, uh, often these URLs are refer to, referring to documentation which is versioned, like here you see it's referring to uh, Django documentation for 1.5, and if you then uh, 
switch your documentation to refer to Django 1.6, you may want to, or don't want to go to all of your documentation and change it. And especially, not all the translators want to go over all of their translated stuff to simply update the version number. And there you can use a feature of Swings. So the thing about the dictionary, ext links is something from the Swings configuration, and there you define these aliases. And then, as you can see below in your text, you can simply use these aliases as prefixes for then the rest of the URL. And so you, like, magically can construct these URLs and only have a single point where you define the prefix on the left side. Um, yeah, and how to handle special cases. Um, there is a if config construction in uh, Swings where you always can check against the current language and so you can have in every documentation like special cases. For example, here's a link to the German community and of course you want to have this part of the documentation only in the German language and not in the other languages. So you can always have like some kind of special part of your documentation only for a specific language. Uh, last tip is uh, how to run link check stuff. For example, there is a link check target and also the link check target and many other targets except the language switch. And link check simply goes over all your documentation and checks the URLs. And of course, you want to check URL for every language. And so this is also possible with all the different languages. Yeah, so what is still missing? Um, for example, a translation setting is missing so that you can build all translation with one command. At the moment, you have to execute all the steps for every single language. And if you have a documentation of 500 languages, there's a lot of work you have to do. And so, of course, you want a translation setting. It's like to say you have a language with your original language and translations with four other languages, and you can simply build all of them together in one row. Another thing that is missing is a landing page for the HTML version because uh, yeah, you, you need something like a page where you refer to all the different languages if someone comes to your page where your HTML documentation is. Another optimization could be you do use GetX Compact to create a single catalog instead of many catalogs, and uh, the rest is not that important. I, I think we use the rest of the time for at least a few questions before time is up, so thanks for listening, and please ask a few questions. Okay, Q and A. There's one microphone over there. Yeah. Hi. Thanks for the talk. Um, so, if you have uh, several source files in the documentation, then you have choose to have several catalog files. But then you have uh, small words uh, uh, um, that occur uh, in every file. Do you have to translate them in every catalog file, or? Are they shared within one Sphinx project? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I always thought about that, maybe excluding an example slide where I show how this catalog looks like, so I really should do that. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, with Sphinx, uh, the, um, the always a full paragraph is extracted, so you, every paragraph is a single message, so you never have single words that can be translated. This is only true for the index, so in Sphinx you can have an index of keywords where you then, which is in the end of the book, which can link then to different parts of documentation. And these index words are translated separately. But all the other stuff is simply translated per paragraph. I hope this was your question. Yeah, well, it's all planned. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? I mean. Yeah. So I'm available all the day here, and I'm here to Saturday. And on the sprint on Saturday, we will also have a sprint on swings. So if you have any ideas on how to optimize stuff, or I don't know, have any other questions, you can always come to us on Saturday and talk to us uh, yeah, about improving swings. We'd we'll be happy to hear from you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, and coffee break. <laughs> <laughs>